I got up early this morning and I wrote that piece of nonsense in, and did it in uh, Cubase 14. Um, you can download that whole project if you want to have a go at remixing a whole digit upgrade or anything else. It's enti you're entirely welcome, and there's links underneath this. Now, what we're here to do, obviously, is to look at uh, C14 and see all the bits and pieces which make this a really significant upgrade. Um, We'll be looking at modulators. We'll be looking at the uh, the new drum machine. Um, we'll be looking at the there's some interesting um, uh, new plugins. This is huge. The scoring thing, the new scoring editor, um, which we will refer to, and then there's new things with um, ways you can adjust um, gain and things like that. Let me just look at the. I tell you what. Let's look at the modulator thing first because that's something which is dead easy to use, dead easy to understand, and really really powerful. So I've already. I am already using it actually in this um, little sequence, um, but let me just quickly, okay, duplicate that June track up there. Um, let me just play in um, the a bass line. F -f 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 okay, now let's just solo that out. Let's get the synth up, and I'll show you how this works. So let's just take the filter up. This is, okay, so there is the um, cutoff filter. Right, if you look in the window now, when you uh, go to edit, across the bottom here, whoa, modulators. Now what you can do, if you click on this, you've got all kinds of different, you've got step modulators, mod scripts, you've got um, macro knobs, shapers. But this is the most obvious one, the LFO. Okay, so there it is, doing its little thing. You click plus there and it goes into learn mode. So then the next knob you touch, i.e. this, there you go. All of a sudden, it's wobbling up and down. So if we now changed it to uh, triangle wave and increase that to, uh, what, 16s? Now, on, let's see what it sounds like. How easy is that? I mean, super powerful super useful. <laughs> uh, you think, whoa, why didn't we have that years ago? No, this is great. There's so many things you're going to be able to do with that. It's really easy. Um, it's not one of these features which is going to take you weeks and weeks and weeks to learn. It's just sort of, it's just there. Um, probably f this next one is, is um, for a lot of you who do orchestral music, this either is, uh, you know, I, I use... The, the, the the term game changer sparingly, but this genuinely is. If you you if you write for live players, if you um, when you're comp composing or writing like to visualise things on a score, um, this uh, new score writing um, uh, score editing in in uh, Cubase is phenomenal because from the moment they did they made Dor Dorico, which is. I think the world's easiest and most powerful score writing um, software. Everybody say, "Oh, why can't we get Cubase and Dorico to talk to each other?" Now they've scrapped the old score uh, editor in Cubase, and what we have is essentially a sort of Dorico light. So here is where is it? Hang on, I've got, oh yeah, I put some little st stringy things in there, which you know look a bit like that. They're, they're sort of a round or about accurate. They're not absolutely great. So if you go into the score uh, editor, bang, look at that. In the past, what you would have got is something which looked dead dodgy. Oh, look, there's a little grace note which shouldn't be there, so I can get rid of that. There's lots, of, there's lots and lots of things you can do here. It's a very, very powerful um, editor. It's only I'm only just getting my head around how it works. But if you want to you know, change note, you can literally drag them up and down. You can do all kinds of things. Um, so you can input them. You can, you, and if you uh, go into the 
um, into the write mode, uh, you instantly get this very, f for those who are Dorico users, um, you'll get this very familiar little um, orange carrot thing coming up, which you can then start putting notes in. Now, I only discovered this this morning. You can now export this directly into Dorico. This is a big deal. Um, so if we go to uh, export Dorico project, what it does is it will go uh, okay, C14 test 2. I only did once this morning, so there we go. Now, if I get my Dorico up. Hello, Dorico. Hello, guy. How are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks very much indeed. Okay, so let's go into C14 blog. Here we go, test 2. Right, open. Bang. How cool is this? <laughs> it's exactly the same. It looks great. You know, I will mean, we can mess about and things, but look, thank you, Steinberg. So if you, if you, I've whinged on about the difficulty of going backwards and forwards between, um, you know, writing on paper and into the door and things like that. But what for an awful lot of people you need to be able to do is just be, you know, the, the, the most basic function to have legible music, which comes up and so that you've got something as a reference. Because what a lot of people are going to want to do is if they're writing stuff in line by line, it's really hard to hear, keep in your head what everything's go. Oh, this is the other thing. Okay, I'll tell you what, let me just move on over here and put some extra tracks in and um, I'll show you a couple of other things. Okay, so if I get, uh, I know, let's, okay, I'll put, uh, let's get a, one of these up. I'm going to put some string line in or something. Here we go. Oops, a daisy. Here we go. And anything really. It doesn't matter, matter what it is. Uh, there we go. Let's have violin one. Okay, so, so let's say, okay, so there's violin one, violin two, viola cello. Let's just do that. Um, so let's. Now, if I'm going into this and writing this line by line, Okay. Okay. Now you might want to do that and think. Actually, how can I, um, you know, how am I going to add to this? So if you get the score editor up, up it comes. You can then down the side, you can have any number of other um, tracks so that you can see what you've played first and you, you, can, you can use it like, like a score, essentially. Um, and they'll all come up and you can turn them on and off. Here we go, look. So there you go. So now you can either go in there and you, you can either use this as a reference um, or you can go in there and start writing this line by line. So you've got visibility. You can see which notes in a chord you've left out, all those kind of things. It's just, this is great. Okay, I think I've gone on. Because th this is either everything or nothing to you, depending on whether you work in score or not. So let's look at some of the other stuff, because there's <coughs> a ton and a half of other things going on here. Um, let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look at the, uh, the old drum machine thing. Um, where it is. Drum. Look, you now get drum. So let's add that. Up it comes. There it goes. Um, you can then load up a... Uh, a drum track preset. What should we go? I don't mind. Cowbell. Classic rock. I don't know. Drum set. What am I doing here? Organic textures. What's all that? Okay. Now, across the bottom. Across the bottom again. Uh, editor. Here we go. So you can edit. There we are. Look. So you get a standard kind of... Um, there we go. Boom, 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 all that stuff. Now, another really nice thing here. Okay, look, put these in. Now, do you see this thing down the bottom saying probability? You can choose how likely it is, uh, here we go, to play. 
So if we go, is this amount of, uh, what's going on here? Oh, blimey, what's just happened there? Oh. Yeah, as you turn the probability knob up, sorry, you can't see the probability knob, here we go. As you turn this probability knob up, those, those um, notes which are affected by it um, become more or less likely to be played. So, so you can do all kinds of stuff and you can randomise stuff like that. Um, it's really, really, it's very, very powerful and I haven't really worked out how, half of how this works yet. You can also use that um, to, uh, if you wanted to use another instrument like, a, I don't know, um, a synth or something like that, you can also use the pattern editor with that. Um, so if we get up, oh, synth, here we go. Uh, let's find one. I don't know. What are we going to go for? Just choose any synth guy. Okay, I know it's never that easy though, is it? Come on, okay, we'll go for the Jupiter. Now, you see this bit here, event type, MIDI part. If you change that to pattern edit event, uh, now you can do the same thing. So when you go in there to edit it, you know, let's create something, um, you now get um, uh, the, the same ability. So. It always seems to start on C1, which is slightly annoying, but there we go, it doesn't matter. So if we wanted, um, then we can go dun 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 dun. I don't know, that kind of thing. Um, you get the, uh, do you get the gist? I don't know. Do you get the gist? That sounds terrible. That sounds absolutely awful. Oh, it doesn't matter. But you get the gist anyway. I think you get the gist. Here we go. Let's. So you can use the, the point is you can use the pattern editor um, to create um, music like that as well. So it can be a sort of more like a step sequencer. Core blimey, there's so much to get through. How long have we been going? 12 minutes and I've only done two features. Oh no. Okay, look, let's um, dive back into this. Um, if we go back to um, what I think everybody must agree is a work of absolute genius, whole bit digit upgrade. Oh, hang on. <laughs> Stop my drums. Here we go. go. Now, okay, let's have a look at this, this little vocal here then. Um, let's Make all one. There we go. Right. Um, if I open it up um, now, there's some really significant advances in the uh, way which you can edit um, audio event curves and things like that, which is something which almost everybody is going to um, get value from. So here we have a bit of my epic lead vox. Okay. As soon as you get the line tool selected and you click on it, you get the volume. Now, you can do a number of things. You can insert little um, things like that. You can raise the volume. Uh, you can put little curves in. Or you can use the range tool if I want to take that one. Now, as soon as you've used the range, look, you've got a little volume thing up the top there. So you can drag that up. You can do all... That must be... F -f -f -f. Okay, so we can have a bit more of that. It's a very... You, you've got a, you know, this is Pro Tools level of uh, control now, which is, you know, really, really welcome. Um, so, for for those of you who are well into the mixing and mastering and all the rest of it, and just getting things to sound right as opposed to smashing things out in two and a half minutes, which is rather my way of doing things, uh, this will make a huge difference. Um, so we're we're pleased with that. Um, what other bits and pieces are there which I haven't shown you? I've shown you the pattern editor, shown you the um, score editor. Um, we've done the... Um, there's, oh, yeah, there's a couple of quite nice um, uh, new um, uh, plugins which come with this. Um, there's one called Ship... Okay, I'll tell you what, I'll just go up here. Let's, uh, let's, let's uh, go into... Okay, I'm just going to put something in. We'll start up here and put some. Okay, that can be quite. OK, 
Okay, right. So just stick that in. Rather than have guitar rig, let's add shimmer. Oh, uh, shall I do delay first? They, they've got this new thing called Studio Delay, and it sounds really good. Uh, it's, it's dead useful. Look, you've got all kinds of different ways of doing this. It makes lots of different sounds. It's pretty cool. Um, let's uh, loop that. Here we go. Right. Oh, guy, where have you gone? Come on, come on. Concentrate, young man. That'll do. Got lots and lots and lots of control in here. Um, the other new one, which I like, is called Shimmer. It's a sort of, those of you who are fa uh, fans of Black Hole, will, I think you'll get some of the uh, idea from this. It is qu quite tonal, I have to say, though. How cool is that? Oh, it's great. You can do a lot of stuff with this. So there's a lot going on for sound designers. Um, uh, the, so there's new plugins. The whole thing, I have to say, seems a bit more frisky and uh, sprightly than um, C13. So I think it's definitely had some under the hood stuff which has made it run better. Because um, when you're running really big projects, which I do, you know, I, <laughs> I'm a musician. <laughs> you know, until, it, until my computer is going, please, guy, don't do any more. I'm going to go push, 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 push. Sometimes I've had problems with, with latency suddenly kicking in and all kinds of strange things when really big projects are starting to push the envelope a bit. This seems to be even more efficient. So what now? What Steinberg have done, just think over the recent past, we've had Logic 11, which has opened itself up very much to non-musicians to be able to use it. We've had Contact 8, which likewise has opened itself up using whatever, AI, whatever else, to, to people who are not uh, accomplished musicians. Cubase and Steinberg have gone in the opposite direction. <laughs> Thank you! They've doubled down on their core users who know what they're doing, um, and they've given professional composers, you know, many, many of whom use Cubase, you know, absolute killer tools. Um, the score thing is, if you ever work with, you know, if you write orchestral music, if you work, if you're lucky enough to have the opportunity to work with live players, the score thing is massive, really massive. And if you read the statement which comes along with it, it's definitely be the beginning of a journey for them, not the point of arrival. So, in other words, they say, now we've got Dorico, now we're going to start adding new features, now we're going to tidy things up. Yeah, because it, there's still bits and pieces which don't work quite as you would expect them to and things like this. So they made it very clear that the Dorico Cubase integration is only going to become more powerful as, as time goes on. Whoopee! <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. So look. That is my first look at um, Cubase 14. Um, we will be updating our Door School uh, Cubase course to reflect um, these new features in Cubase um, 14. So give us a couple of weeks. <laughs> I have to do that. Um, if you want to download my um, Door School, I mean my. <laughs> if you want to do download my uh, whole digital upgrade song, why? <laughs> Um, it's all, all, the, all the synths and all the vocals and everything are bounced out. So you can get, if you want to do your own wacky remix or just muck about with it, it's underneath this. You can download it and um, have some fun. So look, I hope you found that useful. Um, if you're interested in learning more about um, writing music or music technology, ThinkSpace does lots of courses. Just Google ThinkSpace courses and you will find a whole world of entertaining education. There you go. Right. Thank you, Steinberg. That was a good whole digit upgrade. See you very soon.